Hello, I'm Linda Bloomfield. I'm going to tell you about adding colouring oxides to glazes. First I'm going to put my mask and goggles on to make sure I don't get dust in my eyes or lungs. Then I'm going to weigh out some cobalt carbonate to add to my glaze I made in the last video. Cobalt carbonate is a pink powder that when fired in a glaze makes a blue colour. So another way you can use it is to brush on to your bisqueware pot. So I'm going to mix a little bit of cobalt carbonate with water and then brush it onto a test tile. So first I'm going to take about a teaspoonful of cobalt carbonate and this is quite finely ground to like 300 mesh size. So I'm going to mix this with water and it will make a, something I can brush on to paint stripes or colour and this, this is called an underglaze colour. So you can, you can use a raw oxide or you can buy ready-made underglaze colours. I'm just stirring it until it's really well mixed and then I'm going to paint stripes onto the biscuit fired test tile. This is a porcelain test tile. I'm going to paint various thicknesses of stripes, some overlapping so I'll get a darker colour and then some fine separate stripes. And then I'm going to cover this with a clear glaze that we made last week so that we can see how the oxides look underneath a, a clear glaze. This is an example one I've fired already. This one has iron oxide brushed on the left hand side and cobalt oxide brushed on the right hand side. You can see where it's thicker, the cobalt oxides come out darker. You can see the pink carbonate has changed to a really strong blue colour. So now we're going to dip our test tile into the glaze that we made in the last video. This is just the clear cone 8 glaze. So first we need to stir it really well to make sure it's all incorporated in the water. And then we're going to dip our tile painted with cobalt into the glaze. Just one coat is enough. That will just give a clear coat over the top. So just quickly dip it and that's fine. And then we can make sure that the back has got no glaze on it. Now I'm going to show you how to add colouring oxides to a transparent glaze to make a series of glaze tests called a line blend. This is where you gradually increase the amount of colouring oxide. So I've got my triple beam balance scale. You could either use this or a digital scale. And I have a folded piece of paper onto which I'm going to weigh my colouring oxide. Then it's easier to tip it into the glaze. So I'm going to weigh 0.5 grams. This is a very strong colourant. This is cobalt carbonate. You can either use the carbonate or the oxide. The oxide is a stronger version um, to get the same amount of blue colour you would need 1 gram of oxide or 1.5 grams of carbonate. So I'm just weighing 0.5 grams for my first test tile. I'm going to add it to the glaze that we made in the last video which is a transparent conate glaze. I'm just going to tip from the paper into the pot of glaze, make sure it's all in there and then carefully mix it with a spoon. You can use an electric mixer for this but I'm just going to mix it by hand and once it's sieved it will be dispersed more evenly. I usually leave this for a while to slake so that the cobalt is completely wetted and then it's easier to sieve. But you can sieve straight away. This is my 80 mesh sieve with 80 holes per linear inch. You may need to sieve again through a 100 mesh sieve because cobalt it's, it's quite a strong colourant and it can leave blue specks. I'm using a rubber spatula to push the glaze through the sieve. You can use a brush. Uh, I prefer to use a spatula. You can see the cobalt being pushed through in pink streaks. And I'll just make sure it's all pushed through the sieve. And usually I would probably sieve it at least uh, two or three times. But um, just for speed, I'll just do it once this time. And then I'm going to dip a test tile into the glaze. 0.5% of cobalt carbonate is enough to give quite a strong blue colour. So I'm going to dip this test tile 
once and then once it's stopped being shiny I'll dip it again just half the test tile this time and this will be enough to be like quite a strong blue glaze although it looks white it once it's been fired it will be a real strong blue so to make the line blend I'm going to weigh another 0.5 grams of cobalt carbonate add this to the same glaze so the total will be one gram of cobalt carbonate that will make uh, an even stronger blue and I'll sieve it again I'll dip the test tile again so this will be the, uh, the second test tile I've made and then I'm going to do uh, measure out cobalt a third time another 0.5 grams and add it to the same glaze again with, so there'll be a total of 1.5 grams and then I'll sieve this again and dip a third test tile. So you can keep doing this as many times as you like to make a line blend as long as you like. It will just show how the colour increases as you add uh, increments of oxide. So here I have the three test tiles I've made with uh, 0.5, 1 and 1.5% cobalt carbonate and I'm going to write on the back how much I've added to each one. This is just a mixture of iron and manganese oxide. It's really important to write information on the back of the test tile as you, you might think you'll remember it but once you take them out of the kiln it's really hard to tell which is which. So just write the oxide that you added and the, the amount. So in our line blend we have three test tiles with 0.5 1.0 and 1.5% cobalt carbonate and we should be able to see once they're fired that the blue will gradually get darker and darker. I have a line blend I made earlier using copper oxide and this one's been fired. It has 0.5 copper oxide, 1.5 copper oxide, 2.5 copper oxide and 3.5 copper oxide and you can see that the color the green color is getting darker and darker so this is a line blend going from 0 to 3.5 copper oxide and you can use other oxides such as iron oxide this tile here has all of the oxides copper chrome cobalt rutile ilmenite iron manganese and nickel oxides so you can get various colours from green, blue, yellow, grey, brown. And now I'm going to show you what happens when you add two different colouring oxides to a glaze. So I'm going to add iron oxide to our blue glaze that we made. And when you add blue and brown you end up with a black glaze. So this makes quite a nice black glaze. So first I need to zero the balance just to get the weigh, weight more accurate and I'm going to weigh 10 grams of iron oxide. This is red iron oxide and that this amount will give quite a dark brown colour so it's a good way to make black. Smaller amounts of iron oxide will give paler colours like a yellowy brown, amber colour, through a sort of dark brown colour and eventually to black. Iron oxide is basically ground up rust so it's a beautiful red colour. You can get various forms of iron oxide, yellow ochre, umber, sienna, black iron oxide, all of these contain iron oxide but red iron oxide is the most common form. So I'm going to add the iron oxide to the glaze that we made already containing cobalt carbonate and then it will need quite a lot of stirring as it's quite a large amount so I'll stir it really thoroughly before sieving it through the 80 mesh sieve. Iron oxide strongly colours glazes in the raw state so some potters like to keep a separate sieve and plastic spatula just for using iron based glazes now I'm going to sieve the glaze through the same 80 mesh sieve that we used before. Uh, because we've added such a lot of iron oxide you can see it has got 
quite thick. So it might, might help if we add a little bit more water. Um, this, this original glaze just has about 70 millilitres of water per 100 grams of dry material. So we'll try pushing it through the sieve and see if we can get it all through. And then add, we'll add about 10 or 20 millilitres more water, bringing it up to about 90 millilitres of water in total. So I'm aiming for the consistency of between milk and single cream. And this is such a lovely red colour, but eventually it's going to be fired to, to a sort of dark brown black colour. And then I'm going to dip another test tile into this um, glaze. This has both the iron oxide and the cobalt carbonate in it. 10% iron oxide and 1.5% cobalt carbonate. I'll dip the test tile uh, twice. I always find that iron oxide glazes take a long time to dry on the tile, so you have to wait until it's dry before you can handle it. I have one I made earlier and fired, and this shows you it's a lovely glossy black. So it's a completely different colour between uh, the raw glaze and the fired glaze. And I'm just going to write the additions on the back. So 1.5 cobalt carbonate and 10 iron oxide. And don't forget also to label the, con the glaze container. So I'll get a Sharpie pen or felt tip and write on the lid uh, the same details, just 1.5 cobalt, 10 iron. And I have another test I made without the cobalt, which just shows a, a dark, really dark brown glaze. You can see that's just with 10% iron oxide. So I've got some fired results. So on the left is the brushed cobalt and iron. Then the next one is just 10% iron oxide. The next one is iron plus cobalt carbonate. And the bowl is the black glaze with an opaque white glaze layered over the top.